I got a quick question. Can you expound more on the becoming the administrator, uh, I guess, for the estate and getting paid by the court? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, who has the right to file a probate? Answer is anybody can file probate. Different people have priority. So without going through all the legal ease, spouse would have first priority, children and parents would have higher priority than somebody else. And then, you know, it could be cousins, it could be a creditor. So if nobody's selling the house, a creditor like a mortgage company can file a pro petition to probate and appoint themselves as the administrator of the estate. And they have to follow all the rules and regulations. Well, they may not want to do it themselves, so they might want to ask somebody else to be the administrator of the estate. So what happens is you might find an estate where there's four or five siblings, none want to do it. Most commonly, they'll hire an attorney. If the attorney is the administrator, then they can and often charge both to be the administrator and the attorney. And in fact, you've doubled your attorney's fees, right? Double dipping. Double dipping. So, um, and, and I think that double dipping is fine if you're doing twice the work and giving your customer twice or more value. Double dipping is not fine if you don't explain it to your customer or you're not giving them more value for your job. If all you're doing is the same thing you would do as an attorney, you know, no extra work, why would you charge extra? Well, sometimes they'll say, well, we need somebody to do these certain administrative things. You know, they don't, they don't want their administrator in the office or the paralegal to do it. So sometimes they'll hire a third party. Sometimes there's two siblings fighting. They both want to be the petitioner. Neither one wants the other to do it. They'll agree to an independent third party. That independent third party could be a friend, a family member, could be an attorney, could be a professional fiduciary who does that for a living. And the people who market themselves, particularly on bigger cases, but on smaller cases, you could be the fiduciary. And you could say, you know, I'm the fiduciary and normally I would charge the same fees allowed by law, but I waive them if I end up selling the property as a real estate agent, or I cut them in half if I end up being the real estate agent to give them incentive to use you. So you can charge whatever you want to charge up to the legal amount. On a million dollar state, that's $23,000 and it scales up and down from there. So you can charge what you want to charge as long as the parties agree and the judge approves you as the administrator. But you have to pass that test and, and it's not common for individuals to do it. Normally people who want to have a background, they're a CPA or they have a law license. They could be a real estate broker, maybe with property management experience, right? But you want to put a resume together and file the proper motion and document why the court should accept you as the administrator of this estate. Um, Narita asked, do you need credentials to be administrator, like a license or certification? Well, no, you don't need one legally to, to be appointed, but the judge has to agree to appoint you. So it's not clear that a third party administrator is not an attorney, that's the most common one, or a family member, that's the second most common one. So if you're going to ask the judge to approve you, you better have a good reason why you're capable of doing the job. And in your petition, you should include, I think, understanding what the job is and, and your resume as to how you can um, uh, do it. But there are people who do it. It's not magic. It's the people who put that time in and create those resumes. And of course, once you do one, now you've done a second one, you get a testimonial, you attach that, you do two, three, four, next thing you know, you have a whole business. Thank <music> you.